Hello, everyone. Welcome to module three of the course. Um, this particular first assignment deals with the evolution of phenotypes, in other words, population genetics. Once we have changes in individual members of a species, how do those changes propagate? What sort of patterns do we see in the evolution of phenotypes among the larger groups? Okay. So um, in this first assignment window, we've got a number of things to do, uh, a few PowerPoints to look at and a few viewings. Uh, to begin with, there's a PowerPoint lecture as well as a Zoom over uh, session, which are exactly the same thing on change of allele frequencies. And that's just how we see or how we actually measure uh, changes in populations in real time. And looking at the genetic frequencies and changes of actual alleles is a enter and leave populations. There is a short PowerPoint on this one. And then a classic example of this in malaria and sickle cell anemia, which looks at the history of how the, the sort of cause of sickle cell anemia was found and its evolutionary significance. So that's one we don't we don't want to miss. Make sure you do look at this. Okay. Now, next, a very important thing is trying to look at the classic example in which you harbor on your own body of how phenotypes move through populations, adapting adapting you know a species in many different ways. And a classic a classic example is skin color. So you're looking at a video done by one of the leading researchers, Nita Jablonski, and they're looking at how, you know, a, the, a polygenic effect, you know, of, of genes, you know, the, the pleiotropy of many, many different genes coming together to produce sort of one effect, which is skin color, how they produce a sepia rainbow of skin colors we see across the globe and why, why we have this sort of variation as an adaptation for our species. Uh, and the last two videos, sorry, PowerPoints that we're going to finish with Zoom sections, or Zoom sessions, I should say, are the, the forces of evolution. So in other words, um, what is it that really causes species to change and how do we see them change or across macro longer periods of time? So instead of looking at micro little adaptations, you know, how do we see larger patterns? You know, can we actually see bigger patterns? Absolutely, certainly, yes. And we'll discuss those in that PowerPoint. And lastly, we need to talk about what a species is. You know, we sort of hinted at it throughout the course, but how do we know we have a species when we see it? You know, are they moving targets or not? Um, are they illusions? Are, are there something wrong that we've come up with in our configuration so far in the past? And we'll be debating that subject and coming up with a good working definition in the last PowerPoint slash zoom session of this particular uh, session i would probably it would have set these things up in the assignment windows um, we're gonna have like four major assignment windows each one of those miniature little you know assignments within the module you should complete on a weekly basis so if you do one a week you're in good time for the next exam which will occur a month from now all right so enjoy yourselves get get to work and i'll speak with you later bye